Janae Gumake with us in studio here on Golik and Wingo. And you mentioned the Western Conference. We'll stick there. And you mentioned LeBron James, the Lakers. Sounds like everyone's going to be healthy for that one. We know LeBron was dealing with the thoracic injury and some stuff like that. Anthony Davis had rolled the ankle. So they're all going to be back in this one going up against the Clippers at this point. And so I think we've seen in a couple of the big tilts now for the Lakers, that lack of a deep bench has shown up a little bit against some quality opponents from what you've seen so far, is that a flaw that's going to keep them from winning a championship, or is that something they can address over the course of a it year? It might be a flaw. You're right. It might be their, quote-unquote, Achilles heel, whatever the case may be. Because if you look at some of the other championship teams, the Milwaukee Bucks, they have 13 guys that average at least 10 minutes a game. You look at the Clippers. They have a offensive captain in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George that start, then you have offensive ca- captains off the bench, Lou Will, Montrez Harrell, that might be the first pair of guys off the bench to average 18 points per game, like wow. first time in history, right? So they have teams that have their their talent distribution in different ways. I think we realized this, you know, sort of on um, when the Bucks took on the Lakers and they both were flaunting the same record, right? The Bucks looked like the better team at that moment just because they had a huge supporting cast that understood the system. The Lakers looked like that team that we expected them to be when they tipped off the first night, which they ironically happened to lose, where they're so talent-driven at the top with Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Now, one thing I've realized, and a lot of a lot of Lakers fans probably know this, LeBron has already said, I got my guy AD. I'm going to let him do his thing. you know. And then in the second half, I'll probably ratchet up my game and start really trying to put it on people. I don't think that's a mindset they need to have. I think LeBron is the the catalyst for sure, and I learned that watching that Nuggets game because that team, the Lakers, they only had 18 team assists, you know, on that night without LeBron. Only two guys in double figures, AD with 32, Kyle Kuzma with 16. You need LeBron to be aggressive. You need lead, you need LeBron to generate the leads leaguing amount of assists, you know, 11 assists a game. So if I'm the Lakers – I know having AD is the best. He can give you MVP numbers, but you need LeBron to be MVP when he is available. He's already expressed he's going to try to play as many games as possible. I know we were questioning his health, but when he's out there, LeBron has to set the tone. And I think to wrap this up, the number one question that we've asked about the Lakers is, is their supporting cast good enough, right? Can they knock down perimeter shots? While we are happy to see a Danny Green out there and a Kyle Kuzma out there that are shooting the ball, right? What they need is LeBron to actually shoot. He leads the team, I think, around five threes per game. He has the most made threes on the team on the Lakers at, like, 64 or 65. He has to be the shooter, which is crazy because he's doing so much already. So the other team in the Staples Center for the Clippers are sitting at, what, 22 and 10, fourth in the conference right now. But they're 11 and 3 when George and Kawhi are on the court together. Is load management going to keep them out of the top seed in the West? I think load management has affected their continuity. It's affected their chemistry. They've lost a couple games that they should have won just because their chemistry is not necessarily there. A couple weeks ago, we were having the conversations about how, oh, they're this Kawhi and Paul George haven't even practiced, and we're in like late November, early December, right? They're sort of getting their game reps through the game, which I'm not mad at, honestly. But I do think it will. Uh, they're not playing for Christmas Day. They're playing for April and for June. They're hoping that if my guys are healthy, they will figure out a way to win. And the only reason I trust in that system is because not only do you have offensive, like I said, captains between Kawhi, PG-13, Lou Will, Montrez, right? But you also have, and you're getting Shamit back in the mix as well, yep. um, defensive captains in Patrick Beverly. People forget. Well, I don't know if people forget, but Kawhi Leonard, twice defensive player of the Decent, year. Decent, yeah. Paul George last season led the league in steals. So, like, they have defensive anchors. The only thing that they sort of are is a little undersized Zubats. He's, he's, he's been a great role player for them. But will the Lakers, with Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee, LeBron James pin and shots. Anthony Davis, who is, I think, second in the league in blocks. Will they have their way in the paint? That's a good question. Golik and Wingo here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2. Mike Golik Jr., Mike Golik Sr., Chene Gwumake, our ESPN NBA analyst. Merry Christmas. Merry (laughs) Christmas, indeed. Chene, before we let you go right now, there's one other thing I had a question because you talk about the plan with the Clippers, the load management, all these things that we've seen work for Kawhi before. Kawhi is also in the news because of the piece in the athletic, his uncle Dennis asking for planes and ownership stakes. Shout out to Uncle Dennis. Well, he's getting asked. Can you you explain this to us? Like, is this something that happens, like, has happened before? Is this Uncle Dennis just taking advantage of a good situation? Like, for those of us outside of the NBA circles that you were a part of with others, like, what is happening here? Or what did happen? To my knowledge, this does not happen often. 
But what I like to remind people is that, hey, there was only one man on the front lines when Kawhi was getting ridiculed for how he was being, you know, trying to exit San Antonio. One man on the line who was publicly defending him, Uncle Dennis, right? He went from being a villain in San Antonio. Even his teammates weren't speaking glowingly of him when he was leaving. Coach Pop said some things, too. He went from a villain to a hero after leaving Toronto in a year and a half. That man was the only man that was defending him. So I will give him credit. So he he literally defended Kawhi against the world. Kawhi got the world, and now Uncle Dennis is just going to ask for it. Did you did you tell her? Did you say? Oh what yeah, he, what ask, he asked for asking for part you know, asked ownership for, stake, asking for ownership, use of private, private plane, plane twenty four seven, and guaranteed amount of off court endorse, endorsement money. Again, not for Kawhi. For Uncle Dennis. For the, for the family fund. Yeah. yeah. Oh, listen, you know what? That's nego- classic negotiation, though. You can ask for all of it, well, and then yeah. maybe even I was, some of it. I always it. laughed at it because I think, in reality, we all know everyone <laughs> in the league, league officials are not going to fall for that. But, yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. Let, 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 let me, you say you can ask for it, but you can't give it if you're a team that's circumventing the NBA yeah, cap. It is illegal <laughs> to do. How bad do you want Kawhi? So, yeah, How I, I bad guess do you so. Want it? Well, if you trade for Paul George, you can get Kawhi. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.